You're watching Natural Lessons with Naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. Hope you enjoy the show. And most of all, remember to go out and explore your Marion County Parks. Hello everyone. Welcome to another Natural Lessons with Naturalist James Anderson. This is our fourth episode, and today we're going to be learning about identifying some of our common backyard birds. So what we will be learning in this episode, we're going to define the difference in sexual monomorphic and dimorphic. We're also going to talk about uh, the difference between calls and songs. And then we're going to be identifying our local backyard birds. Words you may want to know. So the first word you're going to be hearing quite often throughout the rest of this episode is sexual dimorphic. And what it means is a clear difference in appearance between male and female of the same species, such as color, shape, and structure. So basically it just means that both male and females look completely different. There's a lot of physical features that we can see. Uh, Cardinals is probably one of the best examples um, in Marion County. you got the males who are the bright red and the females that are dull brown. But then we have sexual monomorphic, which means it's hard to tell the difference in appearance between males and females of the same species. So it basically means both male and female uh, look the same. Uh, blue jays, chickadees, crows, um, those are all really a uh, great example of uh, not be able to tell uh, by physical appearance. You would have to do a close examination uh, to tell uh, male or female apart. And then we have our next set of definitions, uh, songs versus calls. So you're probably wondering, well, what is the difference? They are the same, but they are different. But one of the differences, songs are mainly performed by males and calls are mainly done by males and females. So songs are more complex, and those are the more pretty sounds that you hear outside. Now, sometimes some females can do some of those complex calls, but the overall function of a song is the male is trying to A, attract a female, and B, he's trying to defend his territory, telling other males, this is my area, this is my land, these are my females that I'm going to breed with, stay away. And uh, calls is mainly just forms of communication. So rather they're trying to uh, do warning calls, call to their young, uh, things like that. Uh, so when you're definitely reading a lot of your uh, textbooks or your uh, field guide books, and they say songs versus calls, this just gives you an example of uh, what it means. So now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of our episode. We're going to be identifying our backyard feathery friends. So these are just going to be some common backyard birds that we can find in Marion County uh, backyards. So we could probably do more episodes uh, with a lot of different kind of species of birds. But again, these are just the most common ones that most of them you're going to see year round. Now there are going to be a few um, you only see in a particular season. Up first is Northern Carnal, which is our state bird. Now, like we mentioned earlier, Carnals are a great example of sexual dimorphic, which again, both male and female look completely different based on physical appearance. So for the male, overall red in color, Got that red crest, mohawk, whatever you like to call it. It's got a little dark mask, a little dark throat underneath that bright red bill. Uh, but again, overall red body and color. So beautiful bird. Then we have the female. Looks completely opposite from the male, uh, but still has that uh, red crest, that red beak. And it also has a little bit of a faint red coloring around the wings and the tail. But overall, kind of that dull brown color all over the body. Now for calls, if you hear this, this is the, the song that goes 
Pretty birdie birdie, birdie or pretty girl, pretty girl, pretty girl. And that also will make a loud chipping sound. That's the uh, call that both male and females will do. And uh, that will usually be a warning signal saying, hey, there's danger around. But this usually will begin uh, February when we go throughout the spring, especially during the uh, breeding season. But again, what a what a beautiful bird that we're likely to have in the state of Ohio. Here we have a blue jay, very common in Marion County and in the state of Ohio. Uh, these guys were a example of sexual monomorphic, like we talked about earlier, both male and female, uh, look very similar based on physical appearance. Uh, we would only be able to tell by uh, basically close examination. So some of the sight characteristics, uh, kind of like Carnal, does have that kind of that crest mohawk effect, but instead of being red, it is blue. Got kind of a black necklace kind of going around, uh, around the neck region. Uh, also has a little bit of a dark forehead as well. And uh, overall, it's got a, a white belly um, on the underneath side. And then when we're looking on the back, it's a little bit different. It's a very beautiful blue color. Um, we cut kind of from a light blue to a dark blue, a lot of whites, uh, a lot of black bands, uh, especially if you look at the tail here, it's got a lot of uh, dark bands going across. Um, it's got a very sharp, uh, kind of pointy beak used for uh, grabbing seeds primarily. And when it comes to focalization, the, uh, the their traditional name comes from the, their sound they make. Jay, Jay. That's usually an alarm call telling usually other blue jays or other birds, hey, there's something going on. There's some danger. Here's just another call that you may hear. And then Kind of this metallic kind of uh, quido quido, or I kind of call a uh, uh, flute sound. So they uh, make a lot of cool sounds. And one of the most unique things that they uh, that they do is sometimes at bird feeders is they will actually imitate hawk calls. Uh, this is actually a broad wing hawk call. Uh, this is from the Audubon Society. Um, and here, listen. So their goal is hopefully the other birds go away and so that they can claim the bird feeding station. So pretty cool um, adaptation that they have done. So now we have the American golden finch, uh, very common in open field areas. And uh, golden finches are a, another great example of sexual dimorphic. It can kind of be hard to tell apart a little bit, but uh, basically, um, for our summer uh, plumage, the males are, are more of the bright yellow, the females are a little dark yellow. We'll see that here in a little bit. So some of the characteristics of this bird, it's got a little uh, black patch on the top of the forehead. It's kind of have a, a orangish beak as well. Overall, it's mainly a yellow bird. Now, um, Golden finches have the ability to change the color of their feathers. Um, so this is a, a winter uh, plumage. So it still has a little yellow, but doesn't have quite quite as much. Um, but even during this winter plumage stage, uh, they'll have kind of the, the black wing with that white bar going down. Uh, really, really great characteristic. Um, but just like Carnal, um, American golden finches have that really stout beak because they're really well designed for grabbing seeds out of different types of uh, wildflowers or different species of plants. Um, but they, they also will eat uh, some berries as well. So here's just a female, just looks like uh, the male, but just uh, a little bit duller um, than, than the male. So overall, the, the, the same uh, characteristics. So for their um, for their call, they say potato chip. That's what I think they sound like. 
So you'll also hear a lot of different chattering and tweaks as well. What you're looking at now is American Robin. Great sign that spring is here. But it's actually kind of funny. American Robins, they are here year round for the most part, but there are some that do migrate down to the southern portion of the United States. But uh, some will winter in Ohio year long. Not too many, but some. So some of the ID characteristics. It's got that nice bright yellow beak. Um, and it's really thin, very pointy-like, um, very excellent in grabbing worms out of the ground. Um, they have that dark head, and they have a white ring going around the eye. Also, too, the uh, dark orange belly, very great characteristic, and they have that gray back. Now, American robins, uh, they say, are sexually dimorphic, but... You really got to pay attention um, because lighting can really affect, because uh, you'll see in the next slide, a female. Um, for males, they have more of that darker one, uh, darker orange, and the female's not as dark. Uh, but again, lighting can kind of throw that out. If you have a juvenile that's just about in that adult plumage, um, that can kind of throw you off if you're trying to determine if it's male or female. So kind of just keep that in mind if uh, when you're out there observing. But if you see that really rich, dark orange as a really great indicator, you're looking at a male American Robin. So that's what I was talking about. Here's the female. So uh, still has that gray back, uh, but it's actually very, very dull. Um, not as dark gray, light, this one's more of lighter gray and also the, that uh, lighter orange, a lot of white bars kind of going along there as well. So for their calls, you'll see uh, that it has a, or hear a series of rich caroling notes or I always remember, sounds like cherry on, cherry on, cherry on. That sounds like a British person. But you kind of see, it kind of goes in, in a little, uh, little sequence. Cheer on, cheer up, cheer on. So usually about three to five different uh, notes within there. And then when they're upset, you'll hear that uh, that traditional that do do do. Now we have white-breasted nuthatch. A lot of people think these guys are related to the woodpeckers, but they are not. They are in their own uh, separate group because uh, how these guys walk are a lot different than woodpeckers. If you ever notice woodpeckers, they kind of scoop their whole bodies down, but versus nut hatches, I kind of call them like the spiders of the woods. They're, they're the excellent climbers. Um, they, they can turn a whole 360, go up, down, diagonal of trees. Uh, but again, woodpeckers can only really do one really kind of movement. So these guys are sexually monomorphic. Uh, so again, we can't really tell male and female apart very well. So the identifying characteristics, it's got a kind of a grayish back. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, black in there as well. Um, it's got a very thin and pointy beak, excellent on grabbing either seeds or insects out of trees. Um, so that's kind of their specialized diet is uh, getting some insects out. Now they also have a, a dark um, stripe on top of their, their head that runs all the way down to their nap, um, which is basically their, their neck region. And they're primarily white underneath. So when it comes to their calls, you'll hear that gank, 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 or I think it kind of sounds like somebody's laughing at you. And then you have our little series of notes. Now we have the black cap chickadee. Cute little birds that like to visit our backyards. Uh, now there are other chickadee species, um, 
In Ohio, we only have the black cap and the Carolina chickadee. Uh, Carolina chickadees, for the most part, is basically everything under Columbus. Most things above Columbus are uh, black cap, but sometimes their range can overlap. We may discuss that in a future video. So for the identifying characteristics, they have a gray back, a black and white face with a tiny beak, excellent for grabbing seeds and small insects, and they also have a tan belly. Now these guys are famous for their sound, chickadee dee dee, that's where their name came from. And you can clearly chickadee dee dee dee. These guys can make up to 15 calls, and boy, sometimes it can be very hard to distinguish uh, some of all their different calls they make. A lot of there are a lot of tweets, um, chattering, um, but for the most part, you'll hear that chickadee dee dee or that do do. Downy woodpecker, very common woodpecker species in the state of Ohio, sexually dimorphic. So the identifying characteristics when it comes from the male, uh, he'll have that little red spot on the nap or kind of back in the neck region. He'll have kind of a zebra effect, kind of black and white uh, coloration there on the back. And for female, she looks basically the same, but she does not have a red nap. Um, now both the male and female have white bellies and that nice chisel-like beak for chiseling into uh, decaying wood for grabbing insects. So for their call, they make that high uh, kind of peak sound and then a little rattling as well. And there's a drum. Drumming is basically a way on how woodpeckers communicate. Um, sometimes they do it during the uh, breeding season. Tough at titmouse, sexually monomorphic. So how to identify these guys? They also have that crest effect like blue jays and cardinals. They have that nice gray back. They have a white belly and then right on the side they have that orange spot. Um, they also have a dark black beak, excellent for grabbing seeds. So the, for their song, they get Peter, Peter, Peter. And they also make some whistling sounds as well. Now we have the American Crow. These guys are very common out in uh, open fields, agricultural areas. You can even find them in downtown environments. So these guys are very, very uh, adaptable. So overall, they, they are a decent size uh, bird. They uh, not as big as most birds of prey. They're a, lot, you know, a little bit smaller, but uh, they're bigger than most of our songbirds. So uh, they're kind of right in that, that medium size. Um, when you're especially looking at your field guide books. But overall, all black color, black head, black beak, black body. Um, so kind of like when we talked about Cardinal, just overall one general. <coughs> and they're famous for their <coughs> call that they make the <coughs> pawing sound. Ruby-throated hummingbird. This species is a summer resident. This species arrives in Ohio, usually in mid-April. For Marion County, we usually start seeing them in about late April, early May. So this species is sexually 
dimorphic for the males, for the ruby-throated uh, hummingbird. They have that deep ruby or dark red throat. Uh, they have that really long, thin beak for dipping into uh, flowers to grab nectar. Um, they also, under the throat, they have that nice uh, white belly. And they have a green back, which is a little bit lighter. And then on top of the head, it's a little bit darker. So the female, she almost looks completely like the male, but she's obviously lacking that uh, ruby throat. Um, instead of that, she has kind of uh, a ruby or really dark red kind of specks um, underneath the throat region. Uh, but a lot of white that you see around the uh, throat and belly region. Uh, but this is a great picture of that, uh, that nice green that you see on the back and on top of the head. So what you hear now is just wings flapping so much makes a humming sound, but it makes all those really uh, weird twerking sounds. Very, very quiet. Eastern bluebird, sexually dimorphic. So a really great way to identify this bird by sight. It's got a orange breast and a white belly. Uh, kind of like Robin, it's got that really nice dark orange. Um, now I know that some of the sunlight can kind of make it look of a lighter appearance, but it overall kind of looks like a Robin, at least to me. But within its name, it's got that nice a blue head and the nice blue back. And kind of actually a fun fact, there's actually no true blue feather. Now I know you're saying, well, naturalist James Anderson, I'm looking at this bird right now and it looks blue to me. Well, that's actually a couple reasons from the sun. It's causing that nice iridescence, and that's how our eyes interpret it. If you were actually to grab a feather, a blue feather from this bird, and you were to crush it up, it would be a more of a grayish blue, not a true blue. Uh, versus if I grabbed a cardinal feather and crushed it up, it would be that true red color. So uh, on really cloudy days, birds who are blue in color don't really look like this nice bright baby sky blue. So uh, again, the sun, the sun really can, can trick you. And not just with birds that are blue, but waterfowl especially. Um, we may talk about that in another video. So female, like we've been talking about, uh, like uh, cardinal and robins, um, you know, these and uh, goldfinches, they, the females are just that very dull color. So still got some nice uh, coloration. It still has some blue. Uh, but has a little bit of faint uh, orange on the uh, throat region, but a lot of white underneath. Uh, but again, you see that really, really grayish blue color. And that's just what a, uh, even a male can look like on a very overcast day. So, well, how you think how they sound like they say, dude, dude. And then you kind of hear this kind of warbling sound as well. So for our last species for this episode, we are going to talk about house sparrows. So I know for those who are into birding, I know you're going to be saying, oh, why did you have to mention house sparrows? House sparrows are not even native to Marion County or the state of Ohio. Nope, they are not. Uh, they're actually from Europe and they're actually not even a sparrow as well. They're actually a finch. Um, in the old world, and what I mean by old world, I mean places like uh, Europe and China and places like that. Um, but uh, I wanted to mention the house sparrow because since they are fairly common at our uh, bird feeders, sometimes they are a little aggressive. Um, so, uh, and I know I could have mentioned starlings, but maybe in another future video, we'll do some more common backyard birds. So. Uh, these guys are se sexually dimorphic, and uh, for the male here, uh, he has that nice uh, chocolate-rich uh, brown head from the forehead all the way back to the nap. 
Uh, it's got that very strong stout beak for cracking seeds open. It's got a really dark black chin uh, from the throat and kind of in the upper uh, breast region. They got a uh, white belly. And also too, they kind of have that nice uh, chocolate brown, molted brown color on the back. So for the female, she doesn't have all those really dark markings like the male, but she still has that nice stout beak. She still has that kind of that chocolate rich uh, back, but overall does not have that very dark throat. So when it comes to their song, they just have the basically all noisy chirping sounds. Probably hear it very often in your house or go around Walmart or even some of your green space, especially if you live in urban or suburban environments. All right, guys. Well, I hope you learned quite a bit about the diversity of birds that can visit our common backyards. Uh, again, we could have gone over a lot of other different kinds of species, but these are probably uh, the, the top species you will see in most typical yards in Marion County or in the state of Ohio. So a little recap what we learned. We define uh, sexual monomorphic and dimorphic. Um, we also talked about a little difference between calls and songs, and then we identified some of our local backyard birds. So I really want to have a big shout out. Um, this episode, again, I was able to use a lot of our local photographers. Um, so I'd like to thank Bob Turner, Amy Holloway, Lola, Eric Clark, Laura Marshall, and then a few came from myself. Uh, now, all the uh, video clips that you saw uh, were either from pixabay.com or unsplash.com. Uh, now, all the sound credits, uh, none came from me, uh, but i like to thank the Bohr Laboratory of Bioacoustics at the Ohio State University, and a couple came from the Audubon Society. So I'd like to end with this. The only way to get to spring is through winter. Susan Gal quotes. All right, guys. Well, again, I hope you enjoy this program. Have fun. Be safe. But most of all, go out and explore your Marion County parks. I'll see you next time on Natural Lessons with naturalist James Anderson.